let's give it up for Deke Dickerson playing the Link Ray Tribute. Better get your pictures early because this jacket's coming off after about two songs. Let's get that guitar nice and loud. I got to tour with Link Ray several times. And he was the loudest guitar player I have ever heard in my entire life. So if I do a Link Ray tribute tonight, it's just a little puny guitar sound. It's just, it's not gonna work. How's that? Is that all right? Duff Paulson, let's kick it off with a little thing called Hand Clapper. tenor saxophone from Dick Dale and the Del Tones. He's going to be back out in a couple of songs. How's everybody doing? Middle of the, middle of the afternoon. Hell of a time to do a Link Ray set. But you guys are all in the right frame of mind, right? All right. We, we're going to do a lot of Link Ray songs, but we're also going to do a bunch of songs in the style of Link Ray. Like this next one.
very much, Mr. Pete Curry from Low Straight Jackets and the Halibuts over there on piano. He was playing drums in the last band, The Concussions, but you wouldn't notice with that big skull mask on his head. All right, let's do a thing right now. I don't know if we have any vegetarians here, but... Well, back in the 1950s when Link wrote this song, he sat on his back porch, he chopped off the head of a chicken, and he watched it run around his backyard until it died. That's what you had to do when you ate chicken back in the old days. You had to kill the chicken first. But he got a great song out of it, and we're going to do it for you right now. It's called Run, Chicken, Run. The jacket's coming on. <laughs> oh, God damn, it's about 140 degrees inside this jacket. <laughs> I, uh, I bought this Supro guitar and this Supro amplifier when I was about 15 years old because I wanted to be like Link Ray. And you are! And you are! <laughs> well, I'm considerably thicker than Link Ray. <laughs> and he did have the best hair ever, but you know. But uh, one problem with this guitar is that the strings pop out of the nut, and one that did on the last song. Oh, this is a mess. Hold on. I put three industrial strength rubber bands to try to prevent this from happening, and it happened anyway. Hold on. That's yeah, in tune. All right, Duff Paulson back there on drums. John Paul Black. Black? Okay, on the bass. I just know him as JP. Duff kicks him, this one off. You guys gotta help us out. It's called Comanche. Yeah.
applause is optional, that's the end of the song. All right, now, the very first Link Ray record I ever heard was a vocal song. It was on this rockabilly compilation called Rockabilly Stars. And it scared the shit out of me the first time I heard it. I, I put the needle on it, I'm like, what the hell is that? And I'm gonna do that song for you right now. This is a special request of Big Tiki, dude. He, he, did, he wanted some extra vocals on his set. Here we go, a little thing called Marianne.
back out here on the tender saxophone. We're gonna play a couple, couple songs in a row with sax going on. I've always liked this next record. It's a little, hey Eddie, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. Let's do a little thing called Rumble Mambo. sort of obscure Link Ray songs. This is called Rough Shot. Okay, now I need you guys to help me out on this. It's real simple. That's right. Sir Ball, you can help the crowd do this, all right? It's real simple. It goes like this. Sir Paul's going to lead you like an orchestra leader. There we go.
so much, and thank you, Jack. I appreciate it very much. One more time for Jack Freeman, y'all. All right, I gotta check the time. How many of you guys remember I was doing an act called Blind Rage and Violence? I, I guess I formed it 2009, 2010, something like that. I thought it was a genius, high concept idea. It was going to be a Link Ray tribute, and we would wear executioner's hoods. And the lead guy, me, was going to be blind, and his name was Blind Rage, right? High concept entertainer right there. Ever since the first gig, it's been nothing but trouble. We show up in our executioner's hoods, people are like, it's the Ku Klux Klan. Like, no, they're executioner's hoods, man. You guys are terrorists. No, we're really dumb rock and rollers wearing executioner's hoods. So a couple of years ago, I realized that it was probably time to retire Blind Rage and Violence. There was only one problem. I pressed up a CD in about 2010, and I had a thousand copies, and by two years ago, I still had like 30 copies left. So we had to do like two or three more gigs, and once I sold all the thousand CDs, I'm like, well, there you go. That's the end of Blind Rage and Violence. However, you have the exciting opportunity to buy one of the last 27 inches that I have over at the merchandise stand after the gig, so come see me there. So this is the beginning of the new era. I plan on doing some gigs like this every now and then just because I love this music so much. Deke plays Link Ray. Is that all right with you? I'm getting tired of walking in a room with a black mask and people thinking that I'm in the Ku Klux Klan. God damn it. All right, Look, we, uh, we put out this album and we should do this next song. Pete, you want to do it? One more time for Pete Curry. The concept of the album was songs in the style of Lake Ray. And I was at Trader Joe's or something. And this, uh, this Doors song came on, Love Me Two Times. And I was like, that would make a damn good Lake Ray song. Let's do it.
You can turn any song into a Lick Ray song. Man. All right. <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it moving on. I actually got a chance to tour with Link Ray and play with Link Ray a few times, which was amazing. Yes, indeed. I mean, it was really weird. This would have been 2000 or 2001, something like that. I did a tour in Spain with my band, the Phantom Surfers, and Link Ray. And he had this thing, he would get up, it was really strange. He would do his entire set, like 45 minutes long, they'd call for the encore, he'd get the guitar players up from the opening bands, and then he would do the entire set over again. Did anybody ever see him do that? It was super weird. But damn it, I got to play with Link Ray, and I think, I swear, if anybody's out here is in charge of my headstone, my epitaph, Ron, maybe you can take care of this for me. He got to play Rumble with Link Ray. And man, he was, he was a real, I mean, I'm saying this complimentary, but he was a real hillbilly. I mean, a real hillbilly. He had amazing stories about growing up in North Carolina and with a, in a cabin with a dirt floor. And he sang this next song. It was the most primitive thing I've ever heard. We're going to do it for you right now. It's called Ain't That Loving You Baby. Listen to me. I swim to the banks and crawl right on to you. Story. He said, I got this guitar in 1962 
from Bobby Howard, who played in Link Ray's Rayman. And he told me that it was Link's guitar. He traded a stack of jazz albums for it. So I bought the guitar. It was majorly screwed up. You couldn't play it at the time. That's where Steve Sost comes into the story. This area down here was just all split. It was like it was like a spider web of splinters. I took it to Steve Sost. He got got it going again. He used a bunch of super glue and stuff like that. But the most amazing thing that happened was when he looked under the bridge. There were two matchbook covers. There was a matchbook cover from the Washington D.C. area where Lake Ray lived, and there was also a matchbook cover from La Crosse, Wisconsin, where Lake Ray toured in the summer of 1959 with this guitar. All right, so that was pretty impressive. The next thing that happened, I did a Lake Ray tribute back east. It was in the D.C. area, and Lake Ray's wife, I think he was married 18 times, but the woman he was married to at that time, Sharon Ray, she was there, and she said, I remember Lake giving Bobby Howard that guitar. Like, whoa, that's pretty impressive. Then about a year or two later, uh, the people from Norton Records say, hey, have you seen this? There's one photo from 1961 of Bobby Howard on stage playing this guitar. It's like there's nothing to disprove the story. I wouldn't say that it's 100% verified, but goddamn, I don't know where else you're gonna get those two matchbook covers and shove them underneath that bridge. So I wanna thank Steve Sost for, for figuring that out. Now Washburn, you're gonna, you're gonna film this next song for a Dan Electric documentary, is that right? And that's your guy? Okay, all right. Well, it's not, it's not plugged in yet. See, now it's fully shielded. Jim Washburn is going to uh, do a Dan Electro documentary, and then apparently they're going to see uh, a little montage of me playing Rawhide into the vintage 1959 clip of Link Ray on American Bandstand, or maybe the other way around. Link into me, I don't know. If you can put on the slimming filter, I'd appreciate that. Here we go, a little thing called Rawhide.
So this might be the last time I get played for a while. Shit, we're out of time. Where's Jeff? What did he say? He's sitting down, but somebody's... Okay. Do we have... These songs are two minutes each. Can we do three songs or two songs? You tell me. All right, we're going to do two more songs. I appreciate your enthusiasm. Thank you, dude, Jeff, for having me do this show here today. It's been super fun. I do have some merchandise right over there to the side, including those last 20 in existence, Blind Rage and Violent Singles, so come see me. I'm going to have one more time for Jack Freeman on the saxophone. Pete Curry on the keyboards. JP, John Paul Malik over here on the bass. Mr. Duff Paulson over there on the drum. Now, Duff is a trooper, man. I gotta tell you, we actually did two, two gigs with our Ventures Mania tribute band Thursday and Friday night. We had about 40 songs we had to do then. Then we played with Sir Paul Diddley today. And then we got this set. So, man, his head is just full of three chord songs right now. He's remembered to play them all. One more time for Duff. Why don't we throw in a fourth? Yeah, we throw in a fourth every now and then. Uh, I'm giving you this.
these compliment stuff uh, in lieu of payment. It's okay. All right, I'm going to play this guitar one more time here. Hope you guys don't mind. This is a song that uh, he did not record on his guitar. He recorded Rawhide on his guitar, but he recorded Rumble with a Les Paul Gold Top. However, it still sounds pretty damn good to play Rumble on this guitar. So thank you guys very much. We'll leave you with this.